Hi. So I just want to apologize for the fact that the audio didn't work on the video of the review session last night. So I'm going to try to compensate a little bit. I only have a little bit of time because I just got home from work, picked Griffin up, and I have to take him to fencing um, at six. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to squeeze in some videos and hopefully there won't be a crisis. Uh, so I know some people had questions about this study, and I apologize, I know the lighting isn't great, but hopefully you can see this. Um, this is the study that we talked about in class that relates um, testosterone presence or recent presence of testosterone in rats to their ability to um, copulate to ejaculation. And on the y-axis here, what you see is dopamine response uh, to the presence of an estrus female. And what you see on the bottom is on the x-axis is baseline levels of dopamine in the four different groups. And then you can see how dopamine changes over the course of uh, microdialysis sampling of the um, MPOA. And ugh. yes, honey, hold on. You see dopamine levels in the MPOA. What the four different groups are, uh, that was the part that can be one of the parts that's a little bit confusing. Um, you've got intact rats who are just normal control rats. You have, um, and then you have a group of rats that were castrated. Some of the rats were castrated two weeks before the test. Some were castrated one week before the test. And, um, Popular, not popular. And then you have a group that was castrated and supplemented with testosterone. So really to mimic the kind of natural control group, but to also have gone through the surgery of castration. So the main point of this experiment, there, there are two main points. One is that all the rats who ended up copulating had a dopamine rise. So that's point one. And this is consistent with other, other evidence we've seen in the course and that you read about um, in the book from this unit that if a, um, if a rat does not have a dopamine rise, that rat will not copulate. Rats that end up copulating where dopamine is measured, we always see a dopamine rise. Um, if there is no dopamine rise, there is no copulation. So the interesting thing that happened here is that, um, so what they do is they measure dopamine before exposure to an estrus female, so that's baseline dopamine, and then they look at what happens to the dopamine levels when those rats are exposed to the estrus female. So if they're sexually excited and motivated to copulate, then dopamine goes up and they end up copulating. So all the ones that had the dopamine rise ended up copulating. Then you have these guys who had dopamine decline and they did not copulate. So who are these guys? These guys are all in the um, castrates group, the group that was castrated for two weeks. None of the group that was castrated for two weeks but prior to the test had a dopamine increase. And only some of the group of rats that were castrated for one week had a dopamine increase. So these guys are all the two-week castrates and some of the one-week castrates some of the one-week castrates had a dopamine rise and were able to copulate. So what that tells us is that two weeks is too long to go without testosterone uh, if you want to have normal um, sexual function. So recent presence of testosterone is needed to allow that dopamine response to sexual stimuli. So for some of the one-week guys, um, what the exposure of testosterone a week ago was enough that there's some residual effects of testosterone still in their central nervous system. So remember that testosterone is a steroid and steroids regulate gene transcription. So it's slow acting, but has longer lasting effects. So even if there's no more testosterone in the system, it's not having rapid effects anyway. It's having longer term effects that shape neural circuitry. That is what the activational effects of steroids are, are uh, changes in gene expression that affect things like synaptic connections, dendritic branching, but not 
the kind of more substantial nervous system effects that happen during the organizational period where you have um, the birth of whole different populations of neurons or the death of different populations of neurons and more substantial changes in neural circuitry. What you see in the organizational effects are smaller changes, mostly in neuronal um, communication that can shape behavior. So you can have, in this case, another point here is that you have some of the rats in the one week group um, copulated and had a dopamine re response and some didn't. And someone asked in class about that, and that just shows the natural variation in response to steroids. Steroids, uh, especially testosterone, aren't affecting all animals similarly, even at the exact same dose. They're different animals, they have different histories, they have um, different genes. So that, so this experiment really shows those two things. One is something about individual variation and testosterone exposure, and the other is that um, concurrent testosterone is not necessary for a dopamine response and an adaptive response to uh, sexual stimuli. So I hope that helps, and I will see if I can do another video. Okay, bye.